and um, welcome. Uh, my name is Tanya Bickford, and I am the reader advisor for Great Lakes Talking Books in Marquette, Michigan. I will describe myself for the folks who have signed in today who are unable to see me. I am a white middle-aged woman with gray hair and dark rimmed glasses wearing a blue sweater. Great Lakes Talking Books is part of a network of talking book libraries with the National Library Service for the Blind and Print Disabled in Michigan and nationwide. We provide hard copy braille, web braille, audiobooks, audio magazines, all in accessible format so that all may read. Our regional library is the Braille Talking Book Library in Lansing, a part of the Bureau of Services for Blind Persons in Michigan's Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity. Are there any guests with us today from BTBL? I can answer that question. I don't see them here, but I wanted to give them the opportunity to say hi if they were. Our patrons have access to over 125,000 books and the collection is growing daily. Our books and magazines and, our, and web braille are available for on-demand download using the BARD mobile app. For patrons without internet access or technology, we send a digital talking book machine and custom audio cartridges and magazines and hard copy braille through the United States Postal Service mail. In the state of Michigan, we have a special collection of over 1,000 described DVD videos for our low vision patrons. That service is available through mail. The free service is available to people who have a visual, physical, or reading disability. Our patrons contacted us because they can't read like they used to due to diabetes, stroke, dyslexia, a broken arm, cerebral palsy, multiple sclerosis, arthritis, tremors, or Parkinson's. Folks require large print or a magnifier to read are also eligible for our services. This presentation is an hour and a half long and it's scheduled to end at 4.30. I have muted everyone and we ask that you please remain muted during the presentation, which should last around 45 minutes and afterward will allow time for sharing and questions. After the presentation, I'll share the contact information on the screen for today's speaker, Great Lakes Talking Books and the Bureau of Services for Blind Persons in Escanaba. And Pat, I was giving you this opportunity to say hi. Pat is from the Bureau of Services for Blind Persons in Escanaba. Hello, everyone, um, and welcome to, uh, to, I'm excited for you to hear about uh, Linda's journey. And uh, so our, our services, I don't know, Tanya, are, are you giving time at the end for me to talk about what we do sure. or now? Sure, at the end, if that's okay. fine. If you would prefer now, if you have something else to go to, you can do nope. so. Okay. Nope. <laughs> well, no, thanks, Pat. We're yep, glad thank you're you. here. Thanks. Thank you. Having said all of that, I would like to introduce our guest speaker today. Uh, we're here to learn from Great Lakes Talking Books patron, Linda Lee Byrne. Linda is a youper who lives in Iron Mountain with her husband, Wes, of 45 years. Linda has served as a caretaker for her mother who had macular degeneration, as a 4-H leader for 17 years, and as a religious educator for 15 years. When not busy with her three kids and seven grandkids, you'll find Linda rooting for her oldest grandson in the Kingsford High School football games. Linda offers her times to help people, offers her time to help people who have low vision or who are blind. And she's here today to share her story. And with that, I'm going to turn this over to Linda. Hello. I am a white female. I'm five foot two. My eyes are blue. I have naturally curly hair. That's a darker blonde color, which is now turning lighter with some gray. And I am wearing a brownish colored shirt with a heart and some colorful leaves with some buttons sewn on them. So I will, I'd like to tell you about my miracle story. It began about seven years ago. On November 15th, 2015, I woke up feeling awful. I was 
Um, I wasn't feeling very well. I was aching all over and I was throwing up and I normally don't get sick at all. So I ended up going to the hospital and they said I had a kidney stone. So they put me on IV antibiotics, but my blood pressure was really low. It was like 60 over 30 and they couldn't seem to get it to go up. So they decided to fly me by airplane to a hospital a couple hours away in Green Bay, Wisconsin. When I arrived at the hospital, they immediately blasted the stone, which had blocked that tube that goes from the kidney to the bladder. They continued the IV with antibiotics, but my blood pressure still wouldn't go up. I was unrecognizable. I was so filled up with fluids. I looked like the Michelin man. They said I had sepsis, which is an infection in the bloodstream. I started to have trouble breathing, so they put me into an induced coma and onto a respirator. Did you want me to continue? So I was having trouble um, breathing, so they put me on the on the respirator. And after several hours, my hands and feet turned black and blue, and there was no pulse in my hand. So they moved the IV to my arm. The doctor said I was probably going to lose my left foot. Several hours later, my blood pressure was still really low. In fact, it was going down a little bit more. So they took my husband aside and told him to call all of my family because I was going into septic shock and I was not going to survive. He almost passed out. Then they called in a priest and he gave me the last rite. But shortly later, the doctor came in and said they were gonna call in a surgeon. She was gonna try a Hail Mary. So she cut me open from my ribs down and it relieved the pressure on my main artery and my blood pressure started to go up a little. Then they put me on a kidney dialysis machine to get rid of all the fluids in my body. Um, when your organs are shutting down, they give off fluids. So that was part of it. A few days later, my numbers weren't quite right yet. So they needed to go back in to make sure that none of my organs were damaged. They were told that some of them can't be fixed depending what organs they are. After several hours, the doctor came in and told them my gallbladder was gangrious, so she removed it. But she said the rest of my organs looked good. How amazing, the only organ that was damaged is one we don't necessarily need. Some people end up getting that, the gallbladder removed. After that, my numbers were getting a lot better. My blood pressure was getting better too. Even though my numbers were better though, it had been a week and I was still in the coma. They had been checking my eyes and they weren't getting any response. So then they were concerned I might have some brain damage. So they decided to take me off the respirator and out of the coma and ask me some questions. I answered some of the questions wrong so they decided to do an MRI to check my brain. The MRI came back showing everything was good. But they found out later one of the reasons I, found, I answered how many grandkids I had wrong was because my son and his wife were due to have a baby at the end of December. And I was having these really weird dreams in the coma and I dreamt that they had triplets. So I added that to my grandkid total. Several days later, they noticed I was having trouble seeing. So they called in an eye doctor to check my eyes. My husband and my daughter and my niece were in the room. And my niece told me um, after he told them that I couldn't see, um, my daughter started to cry and my niece said she went to the corner of the room and my husband went over to her and said, 
You know your mother, this won't stop her. But because the doctor hadn't explained much about it, we thought my sight was going to come back. We had hoped that it was just like a stroke or something and it would come back. But I started to continue to get better and a lot of doctors and nurses were stopping in. They said they came to see the miracle survivor. But after almost two and a half weeks, um, my kidneys started to function okay and I could stop the dialysis. And then they sent me to a rehab center in their hospital to get stronger and try to walk again. The tips of my fingers and toes were black and they were dying. They had them wrapped in bandages and my feet were wrapped too. So my hands and feet were wrapped up and my hands were in braces to keep them from being clenched. And they gave me some offloading shoes, which means you walk on your heels to protect your toes from the wounds. So here I am completely blind. I was given a walker and they strapped my arms to it and I'm walking on my heels. But after only about three weeks, I was ready to go home. It was six days before Christmas. And on Christmas morning, my son and his wife had a beautiful baby girl. Nope, no triplets. My wonderful husband had to completely take care of me. I was unable to do anything for myself because of my hands. I couldn't eat, go to the bathroom, shower, or dress by myself. He also had to take care of the wounds on my hands and feet twice a day. After being home for a couple months, I went to the eye doctor. He said, that my optic nerves had died and I wouldn't see again. I'm completely blind, I see nothing at all. But my little granddaughter says I'm lucky because I don't have to be afraid of the dark because it's always dark for you, she says. <laughs> I get a kick out of that, she's so sweet. It's never bothered me though because I feel really blessed to just be alive and I feel blessed that I have already seen things so I know what most things are. After about four months, my fingertips and toes, they were black and they looked like frostbite kind of, but they were really painful. And miraculously though, they had healed more than the doctors had expected. So in March, I had the tips of all but one finger removed and I had a few tips of toes and some toes and part of my left foot removed. I'll show you a little bit about my hands. Um, my right hand's kind of uniform, but small looking. It, I can grip things. And my left hand's kind of all different sizes, except for the middle finger is the one that I have a whole finger on. And it has a fingernail, which I love because it's good for scratching and opening things. But um, a lot of people tell me that's the best finger to have. And I say, uh, I always tell them why well, use it now? I never used it before, but I did have to learn how to talk without using my hands. Cause I usually have my hands flinging around and it, it would look like I'm giving people the finger. After about eight months, I contacted the Bureau of Services for the Blind and they brought uh, the bump dots and talking clocks and other little gadgets. They talked me into going to a mini camp in September, which would be held in the Upper Peninsula. The mini camp gives you an idea of the training you will get at the training center in Kalam Kalamazoo, Michigan. It's the Bureau of Services for the Blind Training Center there. And it kind of gives you an idea of all the things they do there. That's where I got my first cane at the mini camp. I met a new blind friend at the mini camp. And after about six months, we talked each other into going together to the training center in Kalamazoo. At first I was really scared. I was about eight hours from home and I was gonna be left there for 10 weeks. You get your own room with a bathroom. There's a laundry down the hall. There's a cafeteria. 
there's classrooms and there's a recreation lounge. I learned a lot there. I learned how to do almost everything I used to do. I just do them a little different now. I learned how to cook again. I really love my Instant Pot, which is Bluetooth to my phone. I figured out how to make the boxed macaroni and cheese for my grandkids. It's pretty simple. You just take a cup and a half of water and put the noodles in there with the water, shut the lid, set it for five minutes. And when it's done, open it, add your milk and butter and the cheese packet and stir it up and you're done. So it makes it real simple for my grandkids. I'd be happy to share my favorite recipes with you if any of you have an instant pot. I have some amazing, quick, easy recipes. Some other things I learned to do were clean again, laundry, computers, iPad, iPhone. I learned to sew, crochet, and macrame again. And I learned how to use the cane, but I still am working on that. <laughs> They also explained to us how you could watch movies again. Most movies are now made with audio description, including going to the theater. If you go to the theater and you just ask for the audio, audio descriptive device, they usually give you a headphone and the headphones will describe whatever's happening in the movie. It's, it's amazing. If you're using an online site, like Netflix or something, they're usually all listed together in one section, the descriptive movies, so it makes it easy. If you watch a DVD, you can find it under language and you pick audio description. While I was at the training center, I tried to learn Braille. Um, I don't have a lot of feelings in my fingers. I, I can feel when I hit something, but I don't know what it is usually when I'm touching. Um, so I was doing okay, but when I got to three dots on the page, I wasn't feeling it. So my habit when I couldn't tell what something was, I put it to my face to figure it out. So I picked up the paper and put it to my face. And then I said, oh, that's a D. And then I said, oh, I feel stupid. And she said, oh, no, whatever it takes. So I ended up learning to read Braille with my lips. I also learned to type braille with an electric brailler while I was at the school. And um, I love it. I make my own greeting cards. I make a picture on the front out of braille. Um, an example would be to make an S. If you, if you wanna make a heart, you use an S an E, an I, and a WH, then you return, and then you do a GH, two spaces, an AR, you return and do one space, an E, and an I. Now the heart is made with um, grade two braille. Probably should have said that first. Um, so that's how you make a heart, it's a really cute little heart. My family and friends look forward to a new picture on my Christmas cards every year. I send out about 60 cards every year, so. It's a lot of cards to make, but I enjoy it. I have some samples here I can show you. This one is uh, some hearts, just so you can see what the heart looks like. And we can see them well, Linda. Oh, good. And I have a hard time, I just can't feel it really well. I think this one is a snowman. My daughter-in-law added this sheet for me. And then this one is, this one goes this way and it is a scenery with a house and a road and some trees. My husband added some little pictures to that one. And this one I did last year is an angel. She's got curly hair singing and holding a book. I also do like 
all the holidays of a jack-o'-lantern, a bunny, a sailboat. So if anyone's interested in a card, I can make them with large print, braille, or just blank with just the picture. However, I can customize however somebody would like one. You can contact me at 906-282-0180. Just leave a message, but um, we'll have that listed at the end of my talk, so you can get that. I met a lot of new friends at this school and I won an award for the student of the year. And while I was at the training center, they helped me sign up for a class through the Hadley School for the Blind in Chicago. All the workshops and classes are completely free for the blind and they're sent to you by mail or through email. When I signed up for a class, they sent me a story about William Hadley, who was the founder of the school. And I was so intrigued when I found out that William Hadley became blind almost exactly 100 years before me with similar situations. He became blind from influenza in 1915 and I became blind from an illness in 2015. He was 55 years old and a teacher in Chicago and I was 57 years old, an administrative assistant and taught a fourth grade religious ed class. Hadley School has all kinds of classes and workshops done completely through the mail. And the information or lessons are sent to you in whatever format you would like. There's large print, braille, CDs, book cassettes, or online. You can sign up for newsletters or podcasts or workshops sent automatically to your email every month. Um, I'm gonna talk next about the iPhone. I'm just gonna get a drink of water real quick. So most people are afraid when they hear iPhone because of the cost. I started out with a used iPhone, iPhone 6 that I used for almost four years. Then I purchased an iPhone SE, S as in Sam, E as in elephant, and I only paid $200 for it. It's a smaller phone. It has everything we need, and you can even get them with extra space in them. Um, I'm not sure what the sighted people like, why they get all those fancy things, maybe faster speeds or better resolutions, but I mean, this is perfect. It, it work, everything works the same as the, as the other ones. And if you don't need the voiceover features, there's things like zoom, um, color, the contrast, um, display and text size, you can type with a braille keyboard with a iPhone instead of a regular keyboard too. You just put your fingers on the sides in the front there. You need three on each side. I'm not sure my, I, if I could, cause my fingers the way they are. The difference in learning an iPhone or like an Android phone is the iPhone never changes. Whether you have one like this or an iPhone 14, which I think is the newest one, everything's gonna work the same. The only thing they've changed not too long ago was the home button. You have a button to click and the new ones have just a spot on the screen that kind of makes a little vibration when you hit it. Once you learn how to use these, it won't matter. It, they all work the same. So if you need to get a new phone, you don't have to relearn anything. With the Androids, you have to learn every time you get a different kind and they don't have as good of accessibility on them. Okay, so I have my voiceover turned off on this one. I'm gonna just show you some of the things you can do without having the voiceover on. So if you can see enough to use it, you still could do some of these things. Hey Siri. 
send text message to self. What do you want to say? Good afternoon, explanation point. Your message to self says, good afternoon, send it. Change it. Okay, what should it say? Hello, have a good day. Your message to self says, hello, have a good day, send it. Cancel text. Okay, then. So I just did that with just like a regular phone. I didn't even have the voiceover on. So you can do stuff like that. You can ask for, um, you can just, if you lose your phone, say, hey, Siri, where are you? I thought it might answer. It, it might say, I'm over here. Otherwise say, hey, Siri, what time is it? And it'll it's just- It's 2.31 p.m. It'll just talk to you. So you don't have to necessarily have it on. But if you want to turn it on, all you have to do is say, hey Siri, tur turn voiceover on. Okay, I turn voiceover on. Okay, so now the voiceover is on. With voiceover, it'll talk everything on the screen. So when I touch the screen, it's gonna say something. YouTube, one, press home to open. Okay, now I'm gonna press home. Calendar. When it says calendar, October I know 6. I'm on my homepage. You double have to learn to how to do, do a double tap with one finger or a swipe with one finger. I hold it with my left hand and then I swipe with my thumb and I kind of cradle it against the phone. So right now it's on calendar. Clock, 2.30 settings. So as I swipe, it's like flicking something off the screen. You just flick it. And when you want something, after you hear it, you just double tap. Just now it said camera, double tap to open. So I can double tap. Viewfinder. Now the camera's camera. open. Take picture, and zero people. It's saying zero people. Tilt right, take picture. When you hear button. take pi picture, it's right near the bottom. You can just touch down there, swipe to the right. Photo and video viewer, button, camera chooser, back facing. Button. Okay, it says camera chooser, back Switches facing. I can double tap. Zero, pe zero people. Now it's on the front. So it's like taking a selfie. One face centered. Near left, take picture. Button, centered. There it says my face is centered, take picture. So just it edge. just took a picture of me. Near right edge. So picture. then when you're done, just Near hit the home camera. button and it closes your Double tap camera. Home. Calendar. I'm on calendar, so that's my October home again. 6. So just take your finger, swipe Clock. to the right. Settings, camera, travel. And then folder. you say, Oh, I wanted Two settings, apps. just swipe to the left. Camera it moves settings. back up. Settings. There's settings. One new item. Camera, trap, mail, social messages. Messages. If you Double want to do a message um, manually, you can add emojis. Messages. Edit. Button. Message. Compose. So Clock. I could compose Two. one. Jody. Inserted Jody. To dictate, you can use two fingers and double tap, or you can just go to the bottom and find the space bar and swipe to the left. It says dictation. So I just put her name in there. Two. Text add contact results. Jody. Edit recipient two. Text field add message. Text message. Text field. Double tap See how it says edit. double tap to edit? To it kind of reminds you what to do every time. Point so it just said double tap, so I did. Now I'm going to go space bar and dictate, so I double tap. Have a wonderful day today, explanation point. Inserted, have a wonderful day today. So now I want to add an emoji. So you just go down near the bottom left. Numbers. You hear numbers, swipe to the right. There's emojis. 44, next keyboard, frequently used. Cardi, sad pet, face blowing a smile, ice cream, balloon, birthday cake, confetti, party face, red heart, pulsating heart, set, pulsating heart. I'll put a pulsating heart on that. Message, text field, is editing. Have a wonderful day today, pulsating heart. Character Then just swipe to the right. Point at send, button, send. So now I just message, sent a message text field with an emoji, messages, hit the home button messages. and now home. I'm back to my calendar. Home, calendar. 
Oops, I opened calendar. that. Calendar, October calendar. So now that I have some apps open, in order to close them, you just click the home button twice. Calendar, Thursday, app switcher, calendar, active. It says app switch, swipe switcher. Swipe up with three fingers to close the app. The calendar's active. You need to swipe up with three fingers. So you just touch it with three fingers, touch the screen and push up. Closing calendar, messages, active. Closing messages, camera. Active. Touch it with two, three fingers, move up. Closing camera. And it closed it all. So now they're all closed. You don't want to leave them open. So that kind of explains a little bit on how to use the voiceover. You can um, use it to um, check your email. You can forward messages, reply to messages. It reads everything on the screen. You can say uh, recipe for chocolate chip cookies. And when I first tried that, it says here, take a look. And I was so mad. I'd hand it to my husband. What is it saying? And then he'd have to read it. I finally figured out if I touched that screen, it, it read it to me. So when it says here, take a look, just touch the screen and it'll have several sites that you can find a chocolate chip recipe on. You click on it and it opens up and reads you the recipe. It's pretty cool. I um, actually took a video of a hummingbird in slow motion. You can switch all that on your camera because it just, like I switched it to back facing camera, front facing. So you can also, once you learn how to use the iPhone, you'll be able to use an iPad because they work exactly the same. It's got the one finger double tap and the swiping, you do the exact same gestures with an iPad. Even if you upgrade your iPad, it'll still keep working. Um, I thought you might like to know how I took notes for this speech. I have three things going here. I have a cell phone for the Zoom. I have my phone here Messages. just to double demonstrate to for you. Voice over off. And I have my iPad on the right with an earbud connected to it. What I did was I talked my um, speech into the iPad and I figured out that I needed to return after every sentence. And then I sent it as a Word program because you can choose pages, PDF, or Word. So send it as a Word program to my email. And then I opened it up on my iPad on my email and I put the earbuds in. And now I just swipe to the right, that swiping gesture. And every time I swipe, it reads each line. So each line can be either a word or a sentence, whatever you want for to remind you what you're talking about. So I'm gonna get another drink. <laughs> And just so you know, if any of you are afraid of the technology, that was me. So you can learn it too, because I did. I started, I had, a, right after this happened, I had just got a smartphone and I was just using it like a phone. So I really didn't know how to do any of this. And I was afraid to do any of it. I was afraid to open settings. Oh my gosh, I might wreck something. But with the voiceover, it's really neat because you can open everything, look at it, everything, do what you want, because until you double tap, you're not going to change anything or delete anything. So swipe around, look around. Don't be intimidated by it. It's pretty cool. So if anyone needs help with the iPhone, you can contact me. My information, I, like I said, will be listed at the end. So some of my favorite apps are pages the one that i did this um speech with plus i use it for my cards for the greetings inside and i use it for all kinds of stuff um if i my husband's not here and someone asks me to go somewhere i'll type him a note on it 
and send it to my printer, go get it, set it down on the counter and take off. Cause then when he gets back, he'll know where I am. I used it for, I made a treasure hunt for my grandkids. So I just talk it into my iPad, print it off. So it's, it's a neat program. It's called Pages. I also like Tap Tap C. You take a picture of something and it'll tell you what it is. Like if you had two cans of soup and you're wondering which one is which, you can take a picture of it and it comes back right away saying Campbell's tomato soup. Or if it doesn't say and just says soup, try it again. It's actually volunteers and some people are more descriptive than other people. Or maybe turn the can around, maybe they couldn't see what it was. So that can help as a quick, just looking at something or wondering what something is at anything. I took a picture of my husband on the couch and it said, man on couch in living room wearing dress shirt. I thought that was pretty cool, but he was wearing a flannel shirt, but I thought, well, in the UP that is a dress shirt. So pretty accurate. Another one I really like is Scene AI. It's S-E-E-I-N-G, a capital A and a capital I. I think tap, tap, C was it. Uh, tap, tap, and S-E-E. -E. So the Scene AI has several functions. Um, the first one is short text. It'll read like a sentence or so. I use that for my grandkids to read to them. You can either put the earbud in so they can't hear and then you, whatever it said, you repeat it, or you can just let it talk to them. Um, it, sometimes it'll miss a word it, or a letter. Uh, one time it said they went outside to pee and the kids were laughing so hard. It was supposed to say play, but um, so it can, it can miss stuff. There is a document one and you just hold it up above your document and it'll tell you to move right or left. It'll, it'll say left edge not visible, right edge not visible. And then it'll take a picture finally and it'll read the whole thing. You could do that for like recipes. It'll read your recipe for you. So don't throw away those recipe books like I did. There's product. You just have to take your phone and hold it up where you think the uh, where you think the UPC symbol is, and it'll go beep 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 beep. Then don't move because once it's beeping, that means that it's it's got that UPC. And then it'll like take a picture or something, and you go on there and it says more, and you click on more, and it'll read everything on that container. Like if it's the mac and cheese box, it'll it'll say the ingredients. It'll say the calories. It'll read how to prepare it. So like if you have a noodle dish packet, it'll tell you exactly what you need. Two tablespoons of butter, one half cup of milk, three cups of water, whatever. And it tells you the directions. So it's pretty cool. You just go to the section called product and try to find the UPC on there. Once in a while, it won't read them if it's a off brand or something. There's one on the CNAI that says person. I'm not sure what that would be for because we had a lot of fun just playing with it. We take a picture of people and it tells them what they look like. And my brother-in-law kept saying, take one of me. We finally did it. And then he got upset when it gave him eight extra years of age. <laughs> but I guess if you had an earbud in and you had that on, if you were alone somewhere, it would tell you if there's someone around you like uh, male, white male, beard, 40 years old, you know, or female, what, you know, so to tell you the people around you, maybe, maybe you'd want something for that, but I'm not sure what else you'd use it for. There's a money, money reader on there. So it'll read your money, one, two, five, 10. It, there's one that says seen, that's just take a picture of anything. I took a picture of my dog on the couch and it said retriever on couch. That's not exactly what he is, but he's cute. He's light color like that. It's a mix. Um, it has a color reader. I don't use it a lot, so I'm not sure how accurate it is because um, I have a different color reader, but it's handy to have on your phone in case you don't have your color check with you. It has handwriting on there. 
the handwriting section comes in handy for if I gave you a card. So read who sent it to you. It has light detection. You can um, tell if you left a light on or might it get it beeps. It'll beep if you're by a window. You know, if you're in the house and you get by a window, it beeps more. Beep, 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 beep. So the light thing comes in handy for me when my husband goes hunting. Um, the first time he left me for three days, came back, he said, the bedroom light's been on. I'm like, oh, I didn't know. Another favorite app I have is called Dice World. It's uh, got like six different dice games. There's Barkle, Yahtzee, uh, Loot, Pig, Threes, and one four twenty four. I think that I don't. Yeah, that's so many games. There's, and it's really fun. It's really easy. Um, I can play it. I don't see anything, and I can play it. It's amazing. You roll the dice. You pick which dice you want to keep. Roll again. Um, it's just a whole lot of fun. You can play the computer, or you can play your friends. Uh, whether you know they live eight hours away, you can still play Yahtzee with them. There's a really good app called Be My Eyes. When you click on it, the person, it's a live volunteer again. So it says waiting for help or something. And then they come on, they say, can I help you? What can I help you with? And then you tell them and they'll help you find something. If you drop something, they'll help you figure out what, what something is. Say you wanna know, is this a cake mix or a brownie mix? So you could have them help you with that. Whatever you want, you just click on it and there's plenty of volunteers out there. It's amazing. I don't use that one because I use my daughter for my Be My Eyes. We use FaceTime. But if I had to, I, I would definitely use that. Like um, you probably could hold it up and they tell you what street you were on even if you got a little confused. Also a good app to have would be the Bard mobile app because then if you don't have your book reader with, you can still read a book. I can show you how to get a book on Bard if you want. Voice over on, two, four. Open Bard. Bard Mobile, best family ever, heading. Okay, I'm on more books. So I'm on a book that I'm reading. I'll show you how it's just like the readers. Navigation, best map, map beginning of zero hours. Current sleep timer, bookmark, previous, jump by chat, next. But rewind. There's the button. rewind button, play, play button, button fast, forward. fast forward button. So it's all got the same Double things. It's got sleep seconds. timer and everything. So um, let me show you. We gotta go down near the bottom of the screen. Tap bar. Tap Get bar. Box. Tab. Okay, there's Two get four. books, bookshelf, bookshelf, bookshelf would be books you've already downloaded. Get books, get books is Tab. what we want to do Two now because we're going to look for a book. Get books, heading, search. We're going to go to the search. Double tap for search. It says double tap to search. Search, search field. Double tap to edit. Search field is editing, character mode. Insertion point at start. So you can either type in the title, the you can type words. in the book number if you know it, or you could type in the author. I'm going to type in an author, then you can pick any book they have. Space. Space bar. Swipe to the left. After you type to the left. You double tap. Double tap with two for the same dictate finish. and dictate what you want. Karen Kingsbury. Inserted Karen Kingsbury, age, selected, format braille, Q, W, Oops. search field, is editing, Karen Kingsbury. After you Karen have that in there, insertion, clear text, go, button. You swipe two times, because first it says clear, in case you didn't want that. Swipe again to the right, and it says go, double tap on go. Go, a treasury of miracles for teens, true stories of God's presence today. More info. A Treasury of Miracles for Teens. That's uh, stories of God's presence one of her today. books. A Time to Dance. Kingsbury. Karen. To more info. You can a click on more dance. info and it'll Kingsbury. tell you about the book. Karen. A Time to Embrace. A Story of Hope, Healing, and Abundant Life. K. 
Kingsbury, Karen. Total time 10 hours. It tells you the time that there's more information on it if you click on more info. Then you would just double tap. Unlock. Kingsbury. More info. A time to embrace. Let's a start. A time to embrace. Okay. In this sequel to a time to dance. DB 57,000. Narrator. Good. Total time. Book number. Add to wish list. Button. Okay. So I just kept swiping down after I clicked on it and it says add to wish list. So I'm going to double tap. Selected. Add to wish list. Delete from wish list button. So you can delete it if you change your mind, but otherwise you're done with that. Search results. Back button. Search. So now I have that one in my wish list, and wish lists are under get books. Kingsbury. Karen. Total time. So to download it, you go to your wish list and then swipe until you hear download and then click on it, and then it'll be in your bookshelf. That's all you got. All you gotta do for that. Calendar, Thursday, October 6th. Double tap to open. And that is all that I have. So if anyone has any questions, I can answer them now. I'm sharing on the screen contact information for Great Lakes Talking Books and um, Linda and the Bureau of Services for Blind Persons um, if you need to contact them. Um, if you need to contact the Bureau of Services for Blind Persons, you may want to use the email address for Patricia Dyke, um, which is at the bottom of this page. You can also, if I can just jump in on that, you can call the 8602 number that you have listed on there. And uh, the uh, woman there is Angie and she would, you know, um, be able to help or to provide my phone number as well. Linda, how long did it take you or how did you go about, was it just trial and error for you with your iPhone mostly or uh, did the training center provide some instruction on that? How did that go for you? Yes, I started at the training center. And like I said, I was really scared to do anything too. And it was kind of funny because my teacher there, I would um, I take this out. So I would be swiping, you know, she'd tell me to swipe and I go too fast because you can actually turn up the speed on here. And a lot of the blind people have it really fast. I turned it down so people could hear today, but you can turn the speed up. It's called a rotor and you turn that up. Well, I would swipe and it was so slow, like, and I knew what it said. So I thought I knew what it said. So I'd swipe again and then I'd go, <gasps> and then all of a sudden the teacher would go <gasps> back at me and she'd go, what happened? And I'd be like, well, I, I missed it. And she's like, oh just go back now, swipe left. So yeah, I did learn most of it through there, but um, you know, I learned mostly the basics. And then, like I said, you get where you're not afraid to try stuff because until you double tap, you're not gonna do anything. So just swipe around, go around, do something else, move. There's always a back button usually up in the left, upper left. If not, check all your corners because it's gonna be back or forwards or saves. They're always up in a corner and you can come down from your, your screen and just touch up in a corner and you might find the back button. So yeah, if you get the basics down, then you can pretty much learn it all yourself. Awesome, thank you. Pat, did you want to talk more about the training that is available? It's no longer available in the UP, correct? The mini, the mini training? Yeah. I think. Right. Aaron. That's no longer in the UP, the mini camp? Well, it's not a, a, a for sure that it's never going to be in the UP. Um, typically, um, there aren't enough uh, numbers of people interested in traveling in the UP to, to go to it. So, uh, we do have one that's coming up in the middle of November that's down in Mount Pleasant that um, if anybody's interested in attending that, we would pay for their transportation there and, and their um, accommodations and meals are all uh, and all the programming that week. And it's really, the mini is meant as sort of an introduction to 
what they um, uh, to skills of blindness and what they might experience at the training center with an encouragement for them to go to the training center uh, and, and get more training. And Linda is in our vocational rehabilitation program. So that's why she went for, how long was it, Linda, nine weeks? Uh, 10 weeks, it was. 10 weeks, awesome. yeah. Yeah, and so she had very intensive training um, there. I see in addition to the technology training, she had um, kitchen skills, she had orientation and mobility, which is that long cane training where they took her out onto the streets of Kalamazoo and let her loose with a long cane. And um, so, <laughs> what's that? Buses that we didn't like to do because we don't have them up here. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, and some communities in the UP do have buses. So, you know, it's just dependent on, on where you, you are. But um, so her, her program went longer um, than uh, we also have other programs um, that people are eligible for. So we have our 55 and over population, which is our independent living older blind. And they're also eligible to go to the training center, but those and to the minis, um, like the mini in Mount Pleasant, um, that however, is usually only about four weeks long at the training center for our independent living older blind. And then we also have the Part B program, which is for those folks who are younger than 55, but that are multiply, um, have, have multiple disabilities and are not um, interested uh, in working. Um, so, uh, they are also now eligible for going to the training center and to the mini. Um, we have a youth low vision program that works with the schools and with the teachers of the visually impaired in the schools to help provide um, headborne devices. So uh, eyeglasses, contact lenses, sunglasses, um, mounted um, scopes, mounted magnifiers, and um, we can provide services that perhaps their insurance wouldn't cover, um, and we can help to pay for those. And that is from birth up until the age 14. And then at 14, they can transition into our pre-employment transition services program uh, if they're eligible. And that would move them into vocational rehabilitation with the idea of helping them get ready for uh, secondary education for, um, you know, for whatever they, they may not go to college or to community college, but for whatever other things they might be interested in doing once they, for employment, once they graduate from high school. And I think those are all of our programs that we have going on uh, right now that I can think of. Um, and so Linda was in the vocational rehabilitation program. So that's a bit, little bit more intensive of, of a program than the others are. The others are more geared right around independent living um, programs. Thank you, Pat. Yeah. Um, does, does anybody have any questions for Linda or Pat? I see that Megan Daniels from BTBL is here with us. Megan, are you here? Maybe she didn't hear. Megan from Braille Talking Book Library, are you with us today? Maybe, does she realize she's muted? Yeah. Megan, you're muted. <laughs> Yeah, let, let me unmute her. Okay, well, um, and so any questions for Linda? Feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question if you have one. Linda, there's been more people who have joined since you began your presentation. So I'm just giving them an opportunity to ask a question. Okay, um, Pat, did you have anything else you wanted to say? Or Linda, anything else you wanted to say? Oh, 
Um, sorry, there is a question from Tim and Michelle. Go ahead. Um, Tim and Michelle, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Tim. <laughs> Thanks hey, for coming Michelle. on. <laughs> it's Michelle. Oh, it's Michelle. Hi, Michelle. How are you? How are you doing? I just want to know how I can get the numbers and information. If you could text that to Tim. I don't know. I didn't get the page was on and then it was gone. Okay. Oh. I can share that again. Um, I can share that screen again. Michelle, can you see this, the screen now with the contact information? I can, but I don't know how to copy it. Oh, um, so Linda knows your contact information? She's got Tim's, yeah. Okay, either that sure. or I, I, I can send it to, um, let me know. We're recording this presentation, so I caution to have you share your uh, personal phone number. Um, but um, so um, I'll forward it to Linda and she can forward it to you through text. Okay, Great. sounds good. Thanks for coming today, Michelle. Thank you. Tim, say hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, hi is this Tim? Yes. Thanks well, for sharing. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thank you all for coming today. Unless there are any other questions, um, we want to thank Linda. Thank you very much, Linda, for sharing your story. Um, you are amazing and you are inspiring. And I know you have uh, more that you want to accomplish. Um, but I think this is an important message for folks who are facing vision loss. Um, and I think that a lot of people will benefit from hearing your story. And I really appreciate you joining us today. You're welcome. We'll have this, uh, the Zoom, it's recorded and we'll share it on our website. If you know anybody who wants to listen to the Zoom or miss the Zoom, we'll have it available at greatlakestalkingbooks.org. And with that, I will end this meeting. So um, thank you all and have a good day. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Thank Linda. You. Thanks, Tanya. Thanks, Thanks Linda. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye.